encouragement on the journey of life, transformational Bible studies, and devotionals. This is Dana Susan Beasley of angelarts.biz, and today I'm continuing my study on falling in love with the bridegroom, that is Jesus. And before I get started, if you would like to get my free devotional, look in the description below. All right, well, I'm going to start with prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you set things right, that we can trust in you, and that we can depend on you. And it's in your precious name I pray. Amen. All right, oh, before I get continue with the devotion part of this i just wanted to say happy saint patrick's day obviously i'm wearing my green i my main name is neil so i'm kind of proud of my heritage being both irish and scottish probably but anyway happy saint patrick's day okay so i'm going to read psalm 11 and i'm going to read it from the message version and here we go And friends, this is the word of the Lord. I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God. So why would I run away now when you say, run to the mountains, the evil bows are bent, the wicked arrows aim to shoot under cover of darkness at every heart open to God. The bottoms dropped out of the country. Good people don't have a chance. But God hasn't moved to the mountains. His holy address hasn't changed. He's in charge, as always, his eyes taking everything in, his eyelids unblinking, examining Adam's flesh and blood inside and out, not missing a thing. He tests the good and the bad alike. If anyone cheats, God's outraged. Fail the test and you're out, out in a hail of firestones, drinking from a canteen filled with hot desert wind. God's business is putting things right. He loves getting the line straight, setting us straight. Once we're standing tall, we can look him straight in the eye. It's one of my favorite Psalms. So I love that last verse, especially. God's business is putting things right. He loves getting the line straight, setting us straight. Once we're standing tall, we even look him straight in the eye. So from this passage, what can we glean that our bridegroom, our redeemer, our savior, Jesus is like? Well, God is righteous. He loves righteousness. He loves wholeness, completeness. He wants me, he wants you to shine for his glory. Every part of us belonging to him. Then we can have, I can have, you can have a relationship with him. I think about my marriage, how important it is to be, to be right with each other to serve one another, to regard the other, and not let resentment build. Very, very important in our marriage. So, what is my response to this passage? How am I going to practically apply it? God's business is getting things right. So, I need to give him the things that are wrong and trust that he will work it out. And that is going to be different for you than for me, but it's a matter of trusting some of the challenges that we face and waiting on him and believing that he's going to come through. And that in, the, in all of it, I'm gonna be able to stand tall with him. And then also, you know, the beginning of this passage is just so, I love this picture, you know, of, I'm reading it again um, from my, I have it on my iPad. Uh, you know, why would I run away now? Because God hasn't moved to the mountains. He is not, he is not afraid. He hasn't changed. He's in charge as always. And that to me seems to be a really important word in these times when, I don't know about you, but Every time I turn around and I look on Facebook or wherever or my email, it's this doom and gloom news, that doom and gloom news, this and that, and here and there, and you know, oh, it's just the end. And but God isn't surprised; He knows. You know, 
he's in charge and it's really important to remember that. And that's why I really like those verses, those verses in the beginning. And what's our response? Our response all along, no matter, no matter what is happening, is to run for dear life straight into the arms of God. If we're there, in, if we're in the arms of God, then whatever comes our way, we'll be all right. And I, there's just so many thoughts stirring in me. You know, again, it comes to the command not to fear. And I'm speaking to myself here because we've had an awful lot of anxiety in the last few weeks and disappointments and worries and challenges and so forth. But if we are in God's arms and in the place where he wants us to be, then what we face, though it may not be easy, it will be doable and we can get through it. And so that gives us courage. So I hope that encourages you to realize that the best place you can be is in God's arms, in relationship with him, to give him all your troubles, to realize that he's in charge, and then to yield to him, to trust in him that he's gonna set it all straight. He's going to make it, he's going to make it right. So those are beautiful, beautiful things. Let's see, what else can I take from this? So another thing that I want to say is, you know, we, we can compare ourselves to others, and I'm guilty of this. It's very easy for me to compare myself to somebody else and think, oh, they're just so much more advanced than I am. Oh, they're so much more successful. Or it's easy to look down on people and go, Phew. You know, well, I'm glad I'm not like that. Kind of reminds you of a parable. But what we need to do is what Jesus told Peter in John 21. And that is, that is just, I walk with Jesus the way Jesus wants me to walk in the direction that he wants me to go in. And you do the same. We all walk in our own lanes and we don't worry about the other person. We just, we have enough to worry about just our own lives with Jesus and our own walk. And that's really where we need to be. It's like, like I was reading in Luke today, I've been reading through the gospels in preparation for Easter and Jesus set his face like a flint to Jerusalem. And he had, you know, he had Peter telling him, well, God forbid that you should go to Jerusalem and, and die. And Jesus says, Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. You know, we have to do, set our face like flint. And I believe that's referencing a verse in Isaiah to what God has called us to do is so, so important. And so all this rambling around, but in the end, completeness and wholeness is what's really going to make us feel best. I remember when I first came back to the Lord when I was 19 and I had done some awful things and I felt after I had, had given my life to him and I would be singing praise songs in our, in our fellowship group, I felt such a sense of completeness and wholeness. It was so good feeling and that is actually what we need in our lives so i hope that encourages you again just be in his arms especially as easter approaches and believe that he's in charge and he's going to set everything right okay so i'm going to end in prayer as a matter of fact, I'm going to read an Irish blessing since it is St. Patrick's Day. Lord Jesus, help us to run to you, to be in your arms, to trust you, to know that you're in charge and that you are going to make everything right. And now the Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. 
May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. All right, so now before I actually say goodbye on St. Patrick's Day, I just want to remind you that, again, if you want the free devotional, you can look in the description box below. Also, I have a Bible study called Becoming God's Bride, and that is going to help you further your relationship with Jesus and your relationship with others. Whether you are married or not, of course, it will help if you're married, help your marriage, but regardless, it's going to help you become closer to Jesus. And what a, what a great time for that, you know, right before Easter. So look below for that information and now, mind you, this Bible study that I've written is unique. It's not what I call a crank the blank Bible study. It's going to help you study the Bible for yourself. So it's going to be a very, it's going to be a valuable tool to help you study any topic in the Bible. There's so much, so much in the Bible. We're so blessed to have it. All right, so... <laughs> That's all. I hope you have a great St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget to wear green, you know, so you don't get pinched. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, so have a great day, and I will see you next week. Many blessings. This is Dana Susan Beasley of AngelHearts.biz. Together, may we reach new heights in our lives and beyond. <laughs>